Swim back to our island. We've got our... Now, as you can see, you can, you can kind of surf fly. So if a shark comes at you, you can kind of surf fly away. And the good news is, if you fall, you won't hurt yourself or break any bones. Because you are falling in water. <laughs> Programming. Gaming. Fitness. Jesse Morgan. What up, ladies and gentlemen? Jesse Warden here once again in sunny, beautiful Orlando, Florida. Tons of sun, tons of palm trees, which is a perfect segue into the game. Let's play Stranded Deep. Stranded Deep is a game of survival, sandbox survival. It models itself after the movie with Tom Hanks, Castaway, where Tom Hanks is in a plane crash by himself on this island, and he struggles with learning how to survive as a primitive human being on this tropical island somewhere out in the middle of nowhere in the Pacific. The difference between this is that he was on a central island which had a lot of things wash up on it. Stranded Deep takes it a little step further where you have multiple scattered islands and you can pick up trash and useful items from that debris and from sunken ship crash ships on the island to build and or grab useful items. It is an early access game, so I'm gonna warn you, there are some bugs. Uh, I've recorded a couple videos like this before on certain parts of Stranded Deep and some strange things happen. But for the most part, uh, I've been trying. Now there are some visual bugs. As you can see, as soon as this comes up, the steam thing goes away. So that's a problem, <laughs> but we'll work through it. So if you click on the top, that's a new game. Okay, this is a Mac specific thing. It might do it on Windows as well. And the yes button is to the left of that scribbled up text. Now I'm gonna skip the intro for you and we're gonna start in our life raft. Now the whole point of Stranded Deep is survival. Now we start in our life raft at dawn. And this life raft, there's actually about two or three types of rafts, but for now we have our life raft, which is a lot more stable, but it's quite slow to row. You row using this little paddle, so you can interact with things. You can hold right click and drag them around. We're gonna hit E and, and pick it up, and we can paddle with it, right? Doesn't matter where you stand in the boat. And we're gonna throw it down with Q to drop it. So we're gonna jump out, and I'm gonna show you something. If you want to swim around, you can, but you have to be careful. The screen will turn dark as your breath runs out. Even though there is a ladder, you can approach the raft from any side. So if you're running from a shark, don't panic. Just walk and press. No need to jump and freak out like I've done a lot of times. So we're going to paddle to our first island, which is random. And notice it already has a shipwreck. Most shipwrecks have debris and will have this little water thing. So I'm going to drop my paddle in my raft, jump out with the space bar, and drag this guy, because I'm paranoid, on the beach. I don't want it to get fallen away in the water. Now you'll see that little watery effect. You'll actually see that in the ocean sometimes. And when you see that, you know there's a shipwreck with goodies underwater. So you're more than welcome to swim out to and get it. Just make sure there are no sharks around. And your boat, especially the life raft, is somewhat stable against sharks, but if they pump up, it'll knock the, the raft around and sometimes knock you out. They're very aggressive. So we're going to open our toolbox here, and we got our first piece of treasure. It is a hammer. This is how you build things. Now, we can build things without the hammer, but the hammer allows advanced building. So we're going to drop this right now. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating a pile of my stuff. So even though mankind is abandoned to an island, we follow our capitalist roots and collect stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go Google George Carlin on YouTube stuff, and you will understand what I'm talking about. There are two main things every island has from the start, and those are renewable resources and non-renewable. Now the renewables are basically actually sticks. They do wash up over time, over days, and although the trees don't grow back, sticks do come out. But it's faster to go to other islands, chop a tree down, bring it back to your main island base, whichever one you like, and collect them. So for now we're going to go find all the rocks and stick on this island. Now, when you find your first rock, you want to find another rock that's actually embedded, one you can't pick up, and bang it against it. What this will do is give you your first awesome man-made tool, and that is a rock shard. So you're going to pick these up, and don't worry if it doesn't happen the first time. It took me uh, about eight tries to break it. I seem to have lost my other shard. Where did it go? It seems to have fallen. Oh, there it is. It's underneath this foam, sea foam. And you can hit tab to see what you start with. You start with your lighter, which is good for darkness. You can hold it down to brighten things up like a little bit. Your water, which is refillable. And your knife, 
which doesn't last very long, but is very fast at getting coconuts. So let's talk about why you need food and water. Oh, there's a bad guy, a shark. You'll learn to not like them. So we'll hold F and look at our main watch. Now, if you're a kid of the 80s, you will recognize this. It is a digital watch, and it has two modes. It has the temperature gauge at the top. This will decrease during night, during uh, rainstorms, and when you go deep, deep, deep underwater. If you get really cold, you can get sick, so be careful. Stand next to a fire or come to the surface. The time is on European time or military time, so it is 1,400 hours, right, kind of thing. It doesn't go by a.m. and p.m., and it tells you how many days you survived. Now, if you left-click, it'll go to a different mode, and you have three states. You have your health on the left, and if you get hurt, you fall down from climbing a tree trying to grab coconuts, you get attacked by a shark, or you just get sick from stepping on a sea urchin or touching a lionfish, this will de uh, decrease. If it does get sick from a status effect, it'll also increase the second stat, hunger, and the third stat, thirst, they'll decrease a lot more rapidly. So you can see as I'm standing here and look at my watch, I'm getting hungry. No macro counting here, kids. We just eat whatever we can. So the, some of these coconuts on the tall palm trees, you can't actually get, but these you can. So we're gonna left click. Sometimes they'll fall, sometimes they won't, and that's okay. I'm gonna grab these guys, and I'll show you if you're thirsty or hungry, how you get it. We'll, We'll bring these guys back to our pile, and I'll show you how to eat. So let's go find some more rocks and sticks. There's one. Let's see, it's fun my inventory. The high stacks go are four. So four stacks of rocks, sticks, things of that nature. And here's the first Easter egg. It is Wally. It's Wally, if you remember him from Castaway. Now this is a very unique item. You do not get it. I've played this game forever, and actually, this is the first time I've gotten Wally. -E. In fact, one of my reviews about this game was that it is very lonely. Now I can walk around with a friend and talk. That's good. All right, let's grab some more goodies. Speaking of which, I highly suggest you do not put Wally -E on a boat. He will fall. Now, notice I can't pick up this rock, right? I'm out of room. I have too many items. So I found this huge tree, I've chopped it down. I'm gonna find the coconuts that it drops. It's all over the place. You gotta, if you hold down C, you can crouch and look around on the ground for the hidden coconuts that fell in the bushes. Now I've chopped down this big tree. You can chop down these as well. Just aim at it, left click. And with a rock shard, it takes a while, about 20 chops with an upgraded axe or even one you find in a treasure chest is significantly less amount of swings. Ah, but we're getting on. So you take it down, and usually, I usually like to create a pile and then work on the trees. Now before we can do anything with wood, we need one other thing. You'll notice there is a plant that looks different from the others. It is called a yucca plant. This is also a renewable resource, meaning it grows back over a day or so. This protopes lashes, also known as springs, or rope. And using lashings, we can actually build and craft a significant amount of useful items. Let's drop that in our pile of stuff. Hey, look, another one right in front of my face. If you swing and a miss, skew right. Got some lashings, turn it around. Drop it like it's hot. All right, so we're going to craft. And now you can see we have a, a ton of new things we can build. An axe, which is wonderful chopping trees. A crude hammer, which is building, but we already found one in our treasure chest, so ours is better. A campfire, which we can cook things with and stay warm. And you can actually upgrade your campfire, and I'll show that in a bit. And a fish trap, where if you put in bait, you can drop it in shallow water. It'll catch fish, so if you don't want to go swimming. If you create a bunch of fish traps, you can get a significant amount of fish very, very quickly, but you can also hunt. So it's really up to you what you want to do. For now, we're going to get the axe so we can chop a lot faster. It'll fall on the ground. We now have our axe. So let's uh, make some more sticks so we can upgrade our campfire. I've been working on my biceps all the live long week. All right. A lot faster than using our shard. Rock shard. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Strike three. You're out of here. Learn to aim, Mr. Warden.
All right, so now that we have a bunch of sticks, let's grab our hammer, and I want to show you how you can craft some things as well. Notice how it turns blue, and you can create something called a foundation. Now, normally, foundations are used for creating a house. When you place a foundation, you can do it high to keep things off the grounds, or you can put it nice and low if you want to have a platform to put your stuff on, right? It's all right, based around capitalism, okay? So, if you put it near water, it becomes a raft. Now, there is a rumor on the internet that if you upside down what, why let's, let's talk about what's different between the raft and the life raft the raft is actually faster than the life raft rowing significantly faster to get the other islands however if you get attacked by a shark or a series of sharks or even a swordfish it is a lot more unstable and you will fall additionally if you start rowing at the back It'll slowly knock you off the back. So you got to constantly walk forward and then row. Okay. Now there's a theory on the internet that if you flip it over, it is a significantly uh, more stable. I, was, I don't think I've tested that theory. I don't think it works. But if you're paranoid, you can try it. So you flip it over by right-clicking and dragging it. See, it feels a little, a little cray cray to me. But uh, anyway, a lot faster. When you get the flippers, you will no longer have to use rafts unless you're bored or paranoid. You can swim faster and you can row. And I'll show you that in a minute. So normally, once you've collected everything, I'll show you how you can crack open these coconuts. Coconuts are very useful because you can both renew your thirst, right, the one on the far right, and your hunger. So let's uh, let's break about three of these. Actually, let's use our axe. This is probably a lot more efficient use of time. You hit it once with whatever item, and it'll turn it to a drinkable coconut. So let's grab them both. Oh, too much stuff. This. I do need that. This. And we will left click. You can drink once, drop it. Drink again, drop it, and then we will crack these bad boys open to get the wonderful carbs of coconut. Now, they don't feel a lot of hunger. <clears throat> but as you can see, eating and drinking a coconut does satisfy your thirst and hunger, if it's not that hardcore. All right, so it's getting dark. Let's create a fire. Make a... Oh, we don't have enough sticks. we got to get some more sticks. Let's go uh, chop another tree, get some sticks. All right, got some sticks. Let's try this again. Whoops. Now, if you don't want to tab to your items, you can use the numeric keys to s flip between all the things that you have in your inventory. We are going to create a campfire. It is getting dark. It gets dark at about 1,700 hours to 1,800 hours. All right, so we're going to create... Where are we going to create this campfire? Right there. All right. So we're going to light it up. And if you have problems lighting it because it's near things, just move your things out of the way. Then you can actually light your campfire. It's a bug that happens sometimes. All right. So what do we use the fire for? Well, traditionally, it's used for cooking fish or crabs. You can also cook potatoes. Now, you can eat potatoes raw, but they give you more hunger. They fill up more of your hunger if you eat them. And here's some potatoes. One, two, three. I told you the knife is fast. Now there are a couple ways to cook. If you upgrade your campfire to a fire pit, you have to have about six rocks, put it around it, and you can refill it by just grabbing a stick and aiming at the fire and refilling it, right? But if this campfire dies out, then you have to start from scratch. So a fire pit actually is a lot easier to start. You can actually just put sticks in it, light it up, and you're good to go. You can upgrade it again to a fire spit using some string and sticks, and you can cook things. We don't have any of those, so we will cook a potato the old-fashioned way. There are a couple ways you can do this. You can either pile rocks around to kind of wedge the potatoes in place. Now, if you do it on a hill and the rocks stay, you can put the rocks next to each other. Grab a potato, and you'll start hearing it hiss when it's cooking. Now, you can either hold it in place if you're patient, or just drop it, let it cook, and the fire will ding when whatever you're cooking is done, ready to eat. Now, if you're 
game for it, you can kind of balance some things on the top of the fire, and they will shake, but they will stay. This is the same for crabs, fish, and potatoes. So we're going to let that stay for now and cook, and go see if we can find anything else. Now, I don't have a torch, so we're going to use our trusty lighter to explore this island. Apparently he has infinite butane. Infinite butane! Coconuts, gotta get some food. Hey, another treasure, all right, I missed this during the day. And it's a machete, all right. This is better than an ax. It's also good for cutting plants and whatnot. Crabs love to come out at night. So if you're hungry, grab yourself a spear or a knife or a shard. Knock them out, and you can cook them as well. Now that ding means that my potato, speaking of food, is ready. I am part Irish, so I would love to have a potato. Potato. Smash and mash and mish and stew. What did you say? Right, let's not waste any butane. Now you'll notice that when you cook something, it changes from whatever it is to cook something. In this case, potato to potato to cook potato. Grab it off, and you can eat it, and it'll fix your hunger. Speaking of which, you can see there's some treasure out there. And if we were brave, we would go out there and do it. I don't recommend going in at night. It's very difficult to see, even with upgrades. So, let's show you what you do if you have the flippers. All right, so we've upgraded. I've got my work-in-progress house. I've thrown my fish everywhere. It is clearly a bachelor pad. I am married. I do have kids, but this does not reflect that at all. What we're going to do is recognize that, oh, we're out of trees. What do we do? Well, find an island, and keep in mind that they look close when you look at them at an angle. So see how it looks far away? If I look like this, the warping of the camera makes it look closer, but it's not. So if we have flippers, what we can do is swim a lot faster. So when you go underwater, you can swim normally. But if you hold shift, ooh, something treasure. By the way, these boats have two levels. Door right there, and a door usually on the bottom. Let's go get some air. <sighs> and a door there. Now, I, I leave things open to let myself know later. Oh, God. Shark. Let myself later know that I've been there, okay? Oh, look, an airplane. As if they're going to see me. Anyway... Let's swim to that island, and notice, if you look at your watch, it gets colder the deeper you go. You don't want to go too deep, it gets really cold. Also, because this game is an alpha, there's two, you got to be careful that if you run into the floor, you will get stuck sometimes. Also, watch out for lionfish. They will make you sick, and antibiotics are very hard to see. <laughs> Once the screen goes bright again, you're good. Now, you can't upgrade your uh, sight to goggles and they will help you see underwater a lot better. Now you notice I just ignored a shark as if it ain't no thang because I have flippers and I can outrun <laughs> sharks because I swim fast as flipper. Now that's dolphin for you kids who don't know what the 70s TV show was. Now in game time it takes about an hour to get from uh, two hours to three hours to get from island to island, okay? I highly recommend you check your watch before you leave and you do not want to leave after 1600 hours by that point it's gonna get dark and if it starts to rain you will be in deep trouble and you better hope that you are rowing straight and a shark doesn't attack you so in my case with the flippers you can swim there in about an hour and you can outrun most sharks um, just beware again of lionfish and sea urchins they are very easy to run into now you will notice that I've been to this island before without a compass to actually understand where you are. It's very difficult to understand what islands you've been to, as a lot of them look very similar, as do the shipwrecks. So what I do is I take sticks, and I drop them at an angle. So I'm going to start from scratch. So when I get to shore, I drop my ore first. Then I look where I came from, which was that island right there, and I drop a stick. And I make sure by grabbing the ends, not the middle, but the ends, and point it to where I was to have a breadcrumb to know where I've been. Some islands will have multiple of these little arrows that tell you, hey, I've been to that island, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with the waypoint. You can leave yourself some supplies. In this case, I've come for the tree, 
And I have a bunch of supplies here. I've already been to this island. So this is kind of a waypoint to collect things if I'm too lazy. In our case, we're going to get a big old tree. Alright, there's a big tree. We're going to get it. Are there any shards? <laughs> Did I leave any rocks? Which are somewhat of a non-renewable resource. Sticks have washed out, but I don't see any new rocks. Let's go look around. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe I missed a rock. I did! Woohoo! Alright, let's get ourselves some rock shards. Oh, yo! What the hell? That rock shard was dancing. He's ready to go. He knows his purpose in life. It's to help me chop palm trees from other islands to bring them back to my main island. What a nice rock shard. Alright, timber. So we're going to grab this by the trunk and run with it. Our character, who was a rich guy in a private plane, clearly was doing his squats, bench presses, and deadlifts to become a beefcake to run around with a palm tree as if it ain't no thang. Now, there is a trick to this. If you grab towards the bottom and you run with it and then swim, we're going to go back to our main island here. If you aim towards the top, you can actually kind of sometimes climb it while you're swimming. It's a weird bug. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where you have to aim for it. Let's, let's see. Maybe we can grab it more towards the bottom. Oh no, my palm tree's going to the depths. Goodbye, palm tree. I can't save you. I must get another. Let's try it again. Let's get another palm tree since we dropped that one. So apparently his uh, grip needs improvement. Actually, it's not that tall. It's just on a rock. It's all right. We can use it. All right. We still have our 30-minute window to get to the other island without attracting the ire of sharks at night. So let's grab kind of in the middle here. We're going to swim back to our island. We've got our... Now, as you can see, you can... You can kind of surf fly, so if a shark comes at you, you can kind of surf fly away. And the good news is, if you fall, you won't hurt yourself or break any bones, because you are falling in water. <laughs> so, I think they'll fix this, but it is a trick to quickly get away from a great white shark. Tiger sharks are usually easy to outrun, but great whites, they scare most of us. So, you kind of have to get this thing at an angle to make it work. So, if you slow down... And then swim really fast. Sometimes it'll work. But once you're in the water, don't let go. You don't want to lose this tree. So let's go underwater so we can swim faster. And pray that we do not hit any lionfish. We have our, our uh, battering ram or spear of tree awesomeness heading towards our island. It's coming with us. It's excited and swimming and bobbing with us. Hi. Ah. <laughs> rise above the challenge, rise to the challenge, rise above the sharks. It still thinks I'm drowning. No, I'm not. Alright, let's be careful. We don't want to hurt ourselves in uh, shallow water. <laughs> Climbing a tree, swimming so fast. Alright, careful of the shelves. You can get stuck in those if you swim too fast with the flippers. Alright. From here, we can drag it to shore. And we now have more wood to finish our house. And we made it just in time for sunset. And as you can see, I have my fire here. Let's go grab some fish. I'll show you how to hunt before we go to bed. Let's go around in the water, find some fish that are not lionfish, wait for them to be highlighted, then stab away. You could have been good at this, practicing. Pick them off. You can do this with crabs as well. Grab your fish, place it on the fire, and it will start cooking. And then grab a stick if you have any to renew the fire spit. There we go. Put one more. And I have my light. My uh, <coughs> I have my solar-powered lanterns to light up the day, but. As you can see, we are enjoying a nice sunset on our island, completely alone. No idea if this game will add the ability to win. For now, it seems to be 
How long do you survive? 18 days. I, I will go eat my protein. Since I need protein and fat and my good carbs. Actually, I'm not hungry right now. I just want to enjoy the sunset. Throw it with the rest of the fish. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Stranded Deep. Now, again, it seems very appropriate that this game was made in Brisbane, Australia by a company called Beam. I've been to Australia multiple times. I named my first daughter Sydney because it is the most beautiful city. And it seems very appropriate. They are an island nation who seems, you know, insecure that they're separated from the rest of the world, yet they are very talented, played huge important roles in history in World War II, contributed a lot of science and water conservation, and all kinds of w other wonderful contributions. So it's very, uh, very interesting that they make a game like this, you know, near their kind of locale in the Pacific. Uh, beautiful place. Anyway, it is early access. It seems for me, after a while, once you start building your house, pretty monotonous. Going to island to island. Never really sure if all these arrows of what islands you've been to, if you're ever making any progress, you're ever going to be rescued. No idea. Quite a lonely game. Um, even if they made it multiplayer, I don't know that would make me feel any better, but maybe that's kind of the effect they're going for, right? Is to make you feel isolated. And if you're making progress, but, you know, finding your purpose in life. Is your purpose really to drag trees from Island Island and build a really nice house? Don't know. But anyway, I encourage you to check it out. It's a fun game, at least for a couple days, a week or so, that I've enjoyed it. So, again, you got any other games you'd like me to play? My name is Jesse Warden. Let me know. I'd love to play test some others that you think are cool, uh, some of which I've played before. And you can hit me up anytime on Google+, on Facebook, on Twitter, things that you cannot access through your watch. It is not an Apple Watch. It is not a Motorola or Android watch. It is a digital watch. Peace out.